His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a written letter from the President of Cyprus, Nikos Christodoulidis, pertaining to the close bilateral relations between the two friendly countries. The letter was received by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, on behalf of His Majesty the King, as he received Ambassador of Cyprus to Bahrain, Dr. Andreas Eliadis. The Cyprus Ambassador conveyed the greetings and appreciation of the President of Cyprus to His Majesty the King and his wishes of further development and prosperity to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The meeting discussed aspects of bilateral cooperation between the two friendly countries and means to elevate them to more comprehensive levels, thereby advancing shared interests. The meeting was attended by the Chief of European Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Ahmed Ibrahim Ligrenis. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Iglebia Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the meeting held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the King of Jordan, His Majesty Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, during His Majesty King Abdullah's visit to Bahrain. The cabinet commended the outcomes of His Majesty King Abdullah's visit to Bahrain, which aims to strengthen relations and cooperation between the two kingdoms for the mutual benefit of their people. The cabinet followed up on the measures taken to address the damage caused by the weather changes in the kingdom and directed the concerned authorities to document and manage the damages. The Cabinet commended the efforts of the Ministry of Interior through the General Directorate of Civil Defense and the General Directorate of Traffic, as well as the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture and the Ministry of Works uh, for their prompt response to the weather changes and rainfall. The Cabinet strongly condemned and denounced the attack that targeted the concert, uh, the concert hall near the capital of Russian Federation Moscow, resulting in the death and injury of innocent civilians. The cabinet conveyed Bahrain's heartfelt condolences and sympathy to the families of the victims and government of Russia and its people and wished those injured a speedy recovery. The cabinet then discussed and approved the following memorandums. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on draft law amending some provisions of the Correction and Rehabilitation Center law. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft decree ratifying the Montreal Protocol on Substances that deplete the ozone layer as amended by the 2016 Kigali Amendments. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU for legal cooperation between the Minister of Legal Affairs and the Ministry of Justice in the UAE. A memorandum submitted by the, by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision amending uh, some provisions of the decision regulating private notary activity. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Oil and Environment on several decisions that support the Kingdom's efforts in protecting fish and marine resources. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum by the Minister of Education on the latest developments on the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of ICT in education in 2023. The Cabinet reviewed Bahrain's participation in the first meeting of the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Alliance for Digital Development's Digital Innovation Board. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Minister of Youth Affairs Rawan bint Najib Tawfiqi on the occasion of Bahrain Youth Day observed on March 25th. The minister noted that this national occasion reflects His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to supporting Bahrain's youth as well as His Majesty's belief in their impact on the kingdom's comprehensive development as the real wealth of the country. Tawfiqi added that the celebration of Bahrain Youth Day showcases the government's commitment led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to fostering young talent by supporting initiatives and programs that enhance their skills and expertise. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 14 of 2024 amending some provisions of Edict 28 of 2006 regarding the establishment and formation of the National Committee for Civil Emergency Management based on a proposal by the Minister of Interior and following the approval of the Cabinet. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1, a new clause numbered 16, will be added to Article 1 of Edict 28 of 2006 regarding the establishment and formation of the National Committee for Civil Emergency Management, and the remaining clauses of the article will be renumbered accordingly as follows. 16, a commander of the Royal Medical Services, RMS, of Bahrain Defense Force Hospitals representing RMS. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 15 of 2024, amending some provisions of Edict 44 of 2022 regarding the establishment and formation of the Government Land Investment Committee. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1, Clause 1 of Article 1 of Edict 44 of 2022 regarding the establishment and formation of the Government Land Investment Committee shall be replaced with the following clause. 1. The Under Secretary for Research and Projects at the Prime Minister's Office as Chairman. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 16 of 2024, amending some provisions of Edict 6 of 2022, restructuring the Government Service Centre Evaluation Committee, Taqim. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1, Clause 2 of Article 1 of Edict 6 of 2022 regarding restructuring the Government Service Centre Evaluation Committee shall be replaced with the following clause. Ahmed Khalid Larifi as member. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain Youth Day is a distinguished national event that recognizes the pivotal role played by the youth in shaping the present and future of Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated Bahraini youth on the occasion and lauded their role in continuing the process of building Bahrain and their distinguished contributions in various fields. His Highness added that Bahraini Youth Day coincides this year with the Kingdom's celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession, highlighting the royal vision of Bahraini youth, which prioritizes the focus on young talents, harnessing their creativity and empowering them to lead in the future. His Highness noted that the Kingdom formulated a clearly defined strategy to evaluate the status of Bahraini youth through a series of initiatives designed by the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, adding that these efforts focus on supporting young talents and facilitating their progression to leadership roles. His Highness emphasized the need for collaboration between the public and private sectors to bolster youth-oriented policies. His Highness praised the exceptional accomplishments of Bahraini youth, recognizing their vital role in innovation and development. His Highness said that several initiatives have been introduced to bolster the role of Bahraini youth as a driving force of innovation and creativity. His Highness reiterated his unwavering support for Bahraini youth, recognizing their sense of responsibility, awareness and commitment to shaping a brighter future for the kingdom. Bahraini youth received the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up and empowerment of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in various fields, which contributed to them assuming many positions and making many local, regional and international achievements. More in this report. Bahraini youth have always been an example to follow and a role model for others. During 25 years as the Kingdom celebrates the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne, we recall with pride the achievements of Bahrain's youth. His Majesty the King sees the youth as a source of pride and always praises them in various forums, especially since Bahraini youth have made many countless achievements to fulfill the aspirations and visions of His Majesty the King. Bahraini youth have also proven their national responsibility in developing the nation. Bahrain is proud of the influential contributions of Bahraini women to national development, in addition to the achievements and progress of the youth sector, the most prominent of which is their recent government appointments and their excellence in many areas.
ومستويات تقدمهم في الحياة العامة ومن أبرز تلك الشواهد التعيينات الحكومية الأخيرة إلى جانب تفوقهم في العديد من المجالات التي نباركها لهم ونوجه بالمزيد من المبادرات النوعية التي ترفع من درجة العطاء الوطني The government of Bahrain, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, embodied the vision of His Majesty the King in supporting and empowering youth who are working within Team Bahrain to achieve the best for the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Prime Minister's fellowship program also supports young people and hones their skills and aims to raise the professional level of young national cadres. Royal visions and goals set by the government have made positive results for the interest of Bahrain's youth. The Bahrain Youth Movement made several achievements following the establishment of the appropriate environment for the development of youth and their empowerment in all fields. More in this report. The youth sector in Bahrain is considered one of the important sectors and a priority of the government's attention, where the sector is supported by various means to achieve the aspiration of Bahraini youth to serve the comprehensive development process of the country through a number of important initiatives that were designed to create a new march for youth, which receives attention and support by representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser contributed to the excellence of the youth sector in the kingdom by establishing an open competitive environment, serving young people and providing opportunities for everyone without exception. His Highness has initiated several initiatives and programs to support Bahraini youth, the most important of which is Istijaba Program, Youth City, Lama Initiative, Masari Program, and Youth Ambassadors Program. These initiatives opened new horizons by learning from various experiences to provide the paths of national and development work. The Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Limsalam affirmed that Bahraini youth are a key player in the comprehensive development process and serve as a driving force for the future strategic vision of the kingdom. On the occasion of Bahrain Youth Day, the speaker highlighted that the accomplishments and successes of Bahraini youth stem from the unwavering support of His Majesty the King. Lim Salam emphasized that the efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in empowering Bahraini youth and providing them with opportunities to contribute to national developments as part of Team Bahrain. He highlighted the Kingdom's key initiatives and programs aimed at benefiting youth, focused on empowering youth such as the King Hamad Youth Empowerment Award. He also commended the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa in developing youth talents and competencies across various sectors. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh affirmed that His Majesty the King's support to Bahraini youth and his interest in promoting their contributions and motivating them contributed to providing national action paths with more successes. He expressed appreciation for the support provided by His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the youth in various fields. He explained that celebrating this national occasion is a celebration of the achievements of Bahrain's youth. He praised the important role played by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to empower Bahraini youth and enhance their capabilities and competencies. He also appreciated the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad to develop and enhance the skills of young people and enhance their national role in achieving leadership and excellence at the national and global levels. Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture Minister Engineer Wael bin Nasser Limbarak paid an inspection visit to the capital municipalities, the municipalities of the Northern and Southern Governorates, to approve the preparations related to securing tanks and pumps and reviewing the mechanisms used to deal with the rain. Minister Limbarak confirmed that the ministry has strengthened coordination between all relevant departments in the capital municipality and other municipal councils. This came to intensify preparations for the rainy season, where the minister explained that the ministry is working continuously to raise its preparations for the rainy season by creating the necessary equipment and work teams to deal with emergency cases.
The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kaabi, and the Saudi Minister of Transport and Logistics, Saleh Al Jasser, signed an MOU on the future of transportation. Al Kaabi affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields, especially in the field of transportation and logistics services, and strengthening the strategic partnership between the two kingdoms, which contributes to enhancing trade and development of the logistics sector in the region. The MOU aims to enhance collaboration in future trends in transport and logistics services, facilitating joint work, research and development. It focuses on exchanging expertise and establishing operations and maintaining modern transportation modes and infrastructure to benefit Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. The minister toured the Bahrain logistics zone and Khalifa bin Salman port. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, and the Saudi Minister of Transport and Logistics, uh, Saleh Al Jasser, signed an MOU on the road safety and maintenance. Al Hawaj highlighted the strong relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, emphasizing the keenness to enhance relations in all fields. He added that the MOU comes as part of the efforts to exchange expertise and cooperation between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia focusing on joint efforts in infrastructure development, road safety and maintenance to advance progress, development and integration. He noted that the cooperation between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia will involve exchanging expertise on road safety, modern assessment technologies, survey systems, scientific and technical information and facilitating visits of engineers, experts and technicians specialized in road and other infrastructure specialities. Minister of Works Engineer Ibrahim bin Hassan Al Hawaj made an inspection visit tour to a number of main streets in the various governorates of Bahrain to check the readiness of rainwater pooling sites to ensure the flow of traffic. During the field visit, the minister inspected a number of main streets, including Sheikh Salman Highway near Kano International School and the National Charter Road, with its intersection with Al Mahruza Road. Al Hawaj affirmed that the ministry's keenness to ensure the flow of traffic to the main road network and tunnels and to deal immediately for rainwater pooling during the periods of rain by the dedicated team. The minister pointed out to the readiness of pumps and distribution of tanks in various governments and sites, in addition to working to re clean up a rain drainage opening to maintain water drainage flow and empty rainwater storage tanks. Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority GSA and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the final of the second edition of Khalid bin Hamad Gold Generation League for Volleyball for the club's category was held. GSA Deputy Chairman His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa attended the finals. Derek Leib Club defeated Al Ahli Club to keep the title. GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Askar and President of Bahrain Volleyball Association Sheikh Ali bin Mohammed Al Khalifa crowned the winning team with the league shield and gold medals and crowned Al Ahli with the silver medals. His Highness Sheikh Salman expressed his appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his patronage of the league, congratulating Derek Leib Club for winning the title, praising the team's level along with the competition to win the championship. He praised the Bahrain Volleyball Association's organization of the event and the participation of various clubs, a technical and administrative staff and various media outlets in supporting GSA initiative. Bahrain's delegation of the parliamentary division participated in the 148th IPU Assembly and the 213th session of the Governing Council in Geneva. The delegation praised the vision presented by the IPU president and her aspirations to enhance relations between the international parliaments and her affirmation of developing parliamentary dialogue and valuable discussions between representatives of parliaments. During the meeting of the Governing Council, a report on the activities and programs of the Executive Committee was presented since the last session of the Council. The heads and representatives of parliaments were also briefed on the report of the IPU Secretary General on the activities carried out by the General Secretariat of the Union during the past year.
the first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, head of Bahrain Parliamentary Division delegation, participated in the meeting of the 148th General Assembly of the IPU. Jamal Fakhro affirmed the interests of the legislative authority in strengthening partnership and enhancing cooperation and coordination with parliaments and legislative councils in brotherly and friendly countries. Fakhro expressed pride in the contributions of Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy, its participation and its continuous keenness to support parliamentary work at the Arab, regional and international levels. During a meeting between the Bahraini delegation and the Secretary General of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Association of Southeast Asia Country, Siti Haji Abdurrahman, Fakhro appreciated the invitation of the Parliamentary Assembly to the Kingdom to join the association and to enhance the strong relations between the two sides. Shura Council Secretary General Karim Al Abbasi participated in the Association of Secretaries General of Parliament's meeting on the sidelines of the 148th IPU General Assembly. Al Abbasi confirmed that the General Secretariat of the Council is proud of its development and progress. She noted that the General Secretariat adopts a number of advanced digital tools in registering and preserving the efforts of the Shura members and highlighting their participation through digital platforms. And and comprehensive annual reports. Al Habasi said that the digital transformation in the work of the General Secretariat is an essential part of its vision and strategy for the upcoming years, especially with the growing use of artificial intelligence systems. First Deputy Speaker Abd Nabi Salman stressed the necessity of drafting international legislation which addresses legal, moral and technical problems related to autonomous weapon and artificial intelligence. The delegation presented a number of amendments and proposals to include it in a draft resolution of IPU Committee on Peace and International Security regarding addressing the social and humanitarian impact of autonomous weapon systems and artificial intelligence. They stress the necessity of enacting legislation that criminalizes and prohibits the use of autonomous weapon systems targeting humans. The delegation highlighted the importance of finding an international document that defines aspects of safe use of artificial intelligence in addition to showcasing the risk and potential effects on the peculiarities and rights of individuals, especially with regard to the use of data and information in illegal ways. Shura Council member, member of the Bureau of Women Parliamentarians, Hala Fayez, participated in a discussion panel organized by the Forum of Women Parliamentarians entitled Women Peace Building, Advancing Sustainable Peace. She emphasized the role of women in decision making and political participation in achieving comprehensive and sustainable solutions to conflicts. Ramzi noted the need to provide the appropriate environment and support for women to continue their work safely and effectively. She explained that women's participation in peace building faces many obstacles and risks, calling for the importance of approving laws and policies that protect women's rights in conflict areas. The Parliamentary Division delegation participated in the meeting of the IPU Committee on Sustainable Development. Shura Council member Dr. Bassam al bin Mohammed confirmed that climate justice requires building effective and responsible partnerships between the parliaments of all countries and international organizations and institutions concerned with confirming, uh, confronting climate change with the aim of ensuring the commitment of major countries to supporting poor and developing countries to enable them to address the effects of climate change. He pointed out that the increasing parliamentary and international interest by discussing and researching the risk of climate change reflects the keenness to develop unified visions contributing to supporting the ongoing international effort to mitigate the repercussions of climate change. Members of the Parliamentary Division Delegation Hassan Ibrahim Hassan and Shura member Dr. Bassam al bin Mohammed participated in the Forum of Young Parliamentarians. Hassan Ibrahim Hassan confirmed that the Bahraini youth contributions to parliamentary and legislative work embodies the vision of His Majesty the King to empower young people and to enhance their strategic and pivotal role in the fields of national and developmental work. 
He noted that Bahrain made a milestone in the field of empowering youth and motivating them to participate in various parts of life. He also pointed out that Bahrain plays attention to routine parliamentary work among young people based on the educational process in schools, universities, and educational institutions, as well as government's interest in educating students in legislative work. The capital governor, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, conveyed the condolences of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the family affected by the tragic house fire in Sitra, which resulted in the loss of two citizens and injuries of two others. Sheikh Rashid prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of the deceased in eternal peace and grant solace to the grieving family and a swift recovery for the injured. During his visit to the family affected by the Sitra house fire, the governor informed them of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to allocate a housing unit for the family. The, government, the governor commended the civil defense personnel for their prompt response and effective handling of the fire incident. The civil defense had extinguished a fire in a two-story house in Sitra, which took the lives of a man and a woman as a result of their suffocation from the smoke they were exposed. While a number of family members in the house suffered various burns and the National Ambulance transported them to the hospital to receive the necessary treatment. The General Directorate of Civil Defense explained that the civil defense teams arrived at the site within eight minutes of the main operations room receiving the call and immediately began rescuing the residents and extinguishing the fire. The directorate affirmed that a preliminary information indicated that the fire was caused by children tampering with matches. GFH Financial Group announced the successful conclusion of its annual general meeting for the financial year ending 31st of December 2023. The AGM saw shareholders approve the board of directors' recommendations for the distribution of a cash dividend of 6.2% of the nominal value of the ordinary shares, save for the treasury shares. Shareholders also approved the allocation of an amount of $3 million on the obligatory zakat form, the retained earnings, providing that the shareholders will be responsible for paying the remaining amount of zakat due. The meeting approved the Board of Directors' report on the group's business activities for 2023, the consolidated financial statement for the financial year ending 31st of December 2023, the Sharia Supervisory Board's report on the group's business activities for the past year, as well as approving the external auditor's report and corporate governance reports for the financial year of 2023. Shareholders authorized the group to repurchase up to 10% of the total issued shares, subject to approval from the Central Bank of Bahrain and elected a new board of directors for the next three years.